Hi, today I'm going to show you 10 things that I can't live without in my kitchen pantry. Uh, these are staples for my animal-based diet. I'm Anita, welcome to my channel where I show you how I lost 145 pounds on the animal-based ketogenic diet, which for me is carnivore. Okay, so uh, let's get started with this. Basically today I am going to be pulling things out of my pantry, out of my fridge to show you the top 10 staple items that I use uh, almost every day and many of them are every single day. So these are things that if you came over to my house on any random day, opened the fridge, opened the pantry, you would find these things and they are indispensable to me when I'm eating a carnivore diet. And, and I think for others also who are an, you know, using an animal-based diet. You can always find a bowl of boiled eggs in my fridge. Uh, so it is a quick thing that I can grab if I need to. And of course I always have, you know, eggs ready to go. So with eggs, you can make omelets. They can go in many recipes. Um, you know, all, there's a lot of the baking recipes, like if you're making the egg white bread or if you're making casseroles. Uh, it, you know, just, I use eggs every day. Uh, sometimes I'm only using one or two, sometimes as many as six or eight. Uh, you can chop them up and combine them with other types of protein, like if you've got some cooked chicken or, or you know, any type of cooked meat, chop it up, make an egg salad. Uh, they're just, they're very versatile. Uh, the other thing is if you really need or think you need a snack, say in the evening or between, you know, two meals or whatever. I, it's sort of like a litmus test. If I'm hungry enough to eat just a cold boiled egg from the fridge, I, that probably means I am hungry. But if I'm like, oh, you know, I don't really feel like that egg, but gee, that looks good. You know, that bacon or something else back there it's probably not true hunger. So, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a mind thing, uh, but okay, so that's the first thing is eggs. So the next thing you will almost er, always find in my fridge are two things, either some raw ground beef ready to be cooked or some already cooked ground beef ready to be used in a recipe. I like to cook uh, large quantities of ground beef uh, as sort of a meal prep. You can do, like this one was cooked in the air fryer. That's why it's got some dark pieces on it. If I only have a pound, I'll do it in the air fryer. Um, if I'm cooking, say three, four or five pounds of ground beef, um, I will do it in my Instant Pot. And there's a video where I showed you my hack for doing Instant Pot ground beef. So we will link that below. So you're ready for anything if you have ground beef. If you have, if it's cooked, you can, you can make a cheesy, uh, ground beef casserole. You can uh, heat it up in a bowl, put a little bit of sour cream on it, a little bit of cheese, some taco seasoning. You, you know, you can do things like that. You, you've got an instant meal. You can combine it with some bone broth and make some soup. With the raw ground beef, uh, you, you know, you can, again, just do all kinds of uh, ground beef. If you look up ground beef casserole recipes, um, you can even put carnivore in front. You're going to find tons of things that you can do with the ground beef. You can make meatloaf, combine it with some with some bacon wrapped around it, some of your eggs that you always have in the fridge and make yourself a nice meatloaf. Uh, you know, there's meatballs and gravy. I've got a recipe for meatballs and gravy. Um, smash burgers, one of my favorites. I have a video on how to make the smash burgers. Uh, there are endless possibilities if you have you know, cooked and or raw ground beef in your fridge. Okay, so the other thing I am never without are my electrolytes. I do want to thank uh, Element for sponsoring today's video. Uh, I would be talking about electrolytes anyways, whether they were sponsoring it or not, because it is a daily thing that I do. And I, I feel that it just, it just helps me 
stay hydrated. It helps me with my leg cramps. Um, and I've had many suggestions from viewers about leg cramps and this is what works reliably for me, so I'm sticking with it. Uh, so Element comes in uh, some amazing flavors and they also have a science-backed formula of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. You can also do some interesting things with Element. You can pour them into cold water or hot water. Some people like the chocolatey flavors in their coffee. You can make gummies, like electrolyte gummies with them. You can flavor, I, I like to flavor my uh, yogurt, my El Rotary yogurt with a little bit of the citrus and it just makes it taste a little like lemon yogurt. And, and so it, it is a nice tasty addition to my day and uh, helps me along with the electrolytes as well. Right now Element is offering to my viewers this eight flavor sample pack which you can get with in the link below, you'll see it on the screen. Um, it is drinkelement.com slash ketogenic woman. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash ketogenic woman. It will be added to your cart automatically when you order anything from their website. And thank you Element for sponsoring today's video. My pantry will never be without Redmond salt. So why do I like Redmond salt so much? Um, I like it because it doesn't come from the ocean. It comes from salt caves in Utah. There's less of a chance that there's going to be microplastics in there. We get plastics from so many different sources if you can at least find, you know, because I use salt at every meal on every single food. So if I can find uh, something where I have one less source of plastic, uh, that's a good thing. I like to um, buy these bags because then I pour these into my little jars. Um, I, I like the fine salt. I like the kosher salt. There's a few other things here, like this one is a smoked uh, hickory smoked salt. I have cherry smoked. This is just a tip of the iceberg. In my pantry, I have several more of these. Um, I've got, uh, this is organic seasoned salt from Redmond's, uh, chili lime, which I love on my shrimp, and taco, which I love on my uh, ground beef. That, that you just saw there, um, you know, plus these few other ones that I that I have. So uh, it comes from Utah. Uh, I will link to them below. If you use my link, there is a discount that you get um, or buy it from Amazon. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is my favorite salt. I use it at every meal. So the other thing that is indispensable to me uh, and uh, it is just something that I have been doing, I would say for the last year or so, is canned fish. And the reason for this is the high omega-3s, especially in these sardines. I get the sardines with, you know, I love these little ones, the bristling sardines. I've got uh, King Oscar here, uh, clover leaf. Uh, they are so high in omega-3s, you're, you're getting a lot of good healthy fats in there. I sometimes buy, is this one water? Yeah, this one is the water pack. So the King Oscars in the water pack. These are olive oil, cod livers, mackerel in olive oil. Um, mackerel is probably my least favorite of all of these, uh, but I do like to use a can of mackerel in place of tuna whenever a recipe calls for tuna. For example, Dr. Lisa's seafood salad. I, I have that almost every day. And so I have quite a supply of things that I keep on hand. Uh, eggs, chicken, and uh, mackerel. Uh, I use mackerel instead of tuna. Uh, and I like uh, smoked oysters. These are in olive oil. Took me a long time to find these and it was with the help of 
a viewer who heard me complain about the fact that I couldn't find oysters with uh, olive oil. The other thing I eat a lot of is salmon. Uh, here we get a lot of, you know, our salmon is all wild. The stuff in the cans, unless it says otherwise, it's very rare to, to see salmon in a can that is not wild caught salmon. So I've got sockeye and I think pink. Yeah, this is pink. And I like them both. Uh, I eat those a lot. In my freezer, I always have a bag of the Argentine shrimp. Uh, I really like that. It tastes like lobster. And I also always have frozen salmon fillets because they cook up so fast and easy in the air fryer. So I would say that I have uh, probably uh, Almost every day I have some kind of seafood on my plate in some way, whether it's part of a meal or the whole meal itself. I, I just have it a lot um, and, and I feel that it has helped my joints um, and my skin and hair and uh, e even even weight loss. Uh, I feel like it sort of, you know, progressed me on. So. Um, now I gotta put these back in my pantry. Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. So these came out of my pantry, but in my fridge, I keep one of each item in the fridge because when I just open up a can and, and eat it, I prefer it to be cold. If it's in a recipe, it doesn't matter. I'll grab it out of the pantry. But if I'm going to have sardines uh, on the side of my steak or something, it's coming out of here because I love it best when it's cold. So I use one of these little fridge, uh, fridge organizer thingies to, to keep that in here. The other thing I'm never without these days is collagen. So I, I, you won't see a can of collagen powder here. This is gelatin powder, which I'll talk about in a moment. The collagen I get from, I make my own bone broth. So I always have, except for I just use the last of it for some soup, but I always have a jar of bone broth that I've made in the fridge. And then my backup bone broth is these, uh, these pucks in the freezer. So when I make a big batch of bone broth, I put some in jars and some go in a muffin container and I freeze them and then pack them in this bag. So these are beef. Um, the other thing I have here is I have bone bags. So my beef bone bag is uh, pretty empty because I just, you know, recently made this. But the one that's getting full is my chicken bone bag. So next up is I will be making some chicken bone broth. Because uh, as soon as this gets full, then I know that it's going to be one batch in my Instant Pot. So I will link that below because I believe the Instant Pot method is the one that works best for me. It's the most convenient. Um, and then, uh, now this one is harder to get. It's easy for me to get. I'm lucky I live near a store that sells these. <laughs> they're, they're there all the time. These are beef tendons. And so I make collagen soup out of this. And I also have some small pieces that I have cooked of these beef tendons all the time in the freezer. And I, if I'm just making something, uh, I will just throw a handful of these in. Um, like if I'm just making a quick casserole or soup or something for myself, I'll throw some of these in and they're already soft because I've cooked them. And so I just need to warm them up with everything else. I, I am, you know, these beef tendons are pure collagen. They're 92% protein, not very much fat. And so I, I use that a lot. The other thing I use a lot is gelatin. I use this in making breading or in the carnivore waffles, uh, anything where I wanna have a crispy uh, texture, uh, you know, salmon cakes, I could put some in there. Um, just different, mostly baking and cooking applications. I don't, you know, add it to my my tea or coffee or anything like that. So um, yeah, col collagen and bone broth. 
you know, these these items are just they're just always there. They're just part part of my my pantry and fridge. So the next thing that I use quite a bit um, that is in my pantry, I try to have them. Uh, is some kind of protein powder. Although I do uh, eat mainly meat, uh, like whole pieces of meat, um, these are more things that I use in baking items. So for example, um, I will use the, uh, the grass-fed beef isolate powder or this one, you can use this one. Actually, and I've tested it with this the egg white powder. Uh, I use these for making waffles, uh, carnivore waffles. So I'll link that below the video where I did that. Um, this obviously, uh, a lot of people have this on hand, the egg white powder. It's very useful for making buns and egg white bread. Um, you know, I've got a few recipes on YouTube already where I've made that. Uh, Indigo Neely has got tons of uh, bread recipes, Maria Emmerich, um, which is, you know, she kind of started the trend for egg white bread recipes. These, uh, you know, there's no shortage of bread recipes using the egg white powder. And then, so, uh, these are, these are kind of the same. So they both are, this is a Canadian source. This one is from the States. Uh, I like this one. Uh, I've tried them both in waffles. They have the same ingredient. I'm not sure why they turn out different, but they do turn out a little different. Um, so to be figured out. But, uh, you know, if you are Canadian, this is your, your best bet uh, because you can get it locally and avoid the high shipping costs and all that. That said, this is my favorite, uh, you know, for texture wise and everything. So I will continue to get this one for myself. This is a new one that I just got, milk protein. And uh, I'm going to be experimenting with this protein powder. And so I have nothing really to say about it yet, uh, other than stay tuned. <laughs> okay, next up are pork rinds. So, uh, when I first started keto, uh, and even at the beginning of carnivore, this was my pork rinds. I, I would just buy bags of pork rinds and they were for snacking. Um, I don't actually snack. I mean, very rarely, very rarely will I have a snack. Uh, but I find them useful for another purpose and that is for baking. So this is a great ingredient in some of the carnivore breads and loaves out there. The meat bread is especially good with this. I also grind them up um, and use them in meatloaf and those types of, of casseroles. Uh, and uh, carnivore breading, if you wanna have, you know, breaded pork chops, breaded whatever, fish, um, this makes a great breading. And so you can either I mean, you know, sometimes I just don't have time, and so I always have a can of the already crumbed pork rinds. Uh, they call it pork panko, pork rind crumbs. This is the unseasoned one. So this is a choice. And what I do, and I, I deliberately left this like this to show you what I do, is um, whenever I need some, uh, if I don't have this and I need some crumbs, I, you know, there's different ways to do it with a rolling pin or smash them or blender, whatever. Um, I have the leftovers in the bag. And if I have a bag of pork rinds and you get to the bottom and there's all those crumbs down at the bottom, I don't just toss it away. I add it to my bag like so. Uh, these ones were not show cheddar. And so next time I make something with pork rinds, um, you know, I have more. Uh, so extremely handy and also something that uh, gets used in a lot of carnivore recipes. Okay, so uh, you always need something to cook with when you're making your food and these are my preferred choices from most expensive to cheapest. So um, this is beef butter or tallow. You can buy tallow in a jar or a can. I like this one. It's from Carnivore Crisp. 
they call it beef butter, but it is basically tallow. This is grass fed, so I like that about it. So this, um, I will put the link down below. You can get a discount for this one. And uh, so that's from Carnivore Crisp. Uh, butter, butter is my, uh, a good choice. Butter is a great choice to cook in, great for cooking eggs, great for cooking just about anything. Um, but around here now, uh, so I got this one from Costco. It's New Zealand grass-fed butter. I believe it was $7.99 for a pound. So, you know, prices have gone up on the butter. This is my saved bacon grease. This one, I just pour it off every time I cook bacon, or uh, actually some of this is from pork belly. So bacon grease, pork belly grease, I thought it would be okay to mix that. Same animal. Um, this is free. So uh, this is my top choice for cooking. Uh, you know, just save it. It's okay. My, I remember all my aunties in Alberta on the farms. Everybody had a can of grease beside the stove. They never refrigerated it, anything like that. They just poured it in and the next day they, they used it for cooking. Nothing wrong with that. So there we go. Staples. Okay, so my next item uh, of things that I like to have on hand are a type of a meal replacement or travel food uh, or you're just stuck. There's nothing to eat. You can have it in your purse. Now, I used to use purse bacon for that um, and I still would if I was in a pinch. Purse bacon uh, bacon has become kind of a yellow light food for me. I tend to overeat it when it's around. And so the chances of there being bacon in the fridge when I need purse bacon are pretty slim. Because I've eaten it already. So it tends not to be a good uh, fit for me. So, you know, then we have things like this. These are bars that you can purchase. Uh, this comes from Amazon. Uh, these are epic bars and they're actually quite tasty. Uh, and um, I can't remember how much they are, but they're, they're uh, relatively cheap. Now this one is completely different. Uh, you can't even really compare these, but I'm gonna tell you the main differences. Um, so this basically has two ingredients. Some of them have a third ingredient. Uh, this one has grass finished beef, grass finished tallow, Redmond real salt. Okay, so that, that's three ingredients, tallow, salt, beef. Apparently this package can last 40 years if you don't open it. So this is uh, basically a form of pemmican. This is great for traveling or hiking. Um, some of them do have honey in them, but it's very little. So this has grass finished beef, grass finished tallow, raw honey, Redmond real salt. They uh, are a full meal replacement. Whereas this, is, I would call this a snack. This is more like the purse bacon uh, because one of these bars, 120 calories, um, it only has where is it? Seven grams of protein and uh, seven grams of fat. So, and this one has a couple of carbs in it as well. It's very tiny, so I'm having trouble reading it. Four grams, I think. Okay, anyways. Uh, so th this is more like a, you know, something, you could have it maybe with the meal. And when I do have these, if I have them here at home, just because I feel like having one, I often will just have a third of a bar or uh, up to a half of a bar with my other food. Like if I'm eating, say, a sardine salad or the seafood salad, um, I might have half a bar of one of these with that, um, and that ups my protein. So they are two completely different types of bars uh, and so it really depends on what your needs are. And uh, yeah, uh, so it's, but it is some, you know, it's emergency food that, that's good to have around. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Those are the uh, 10 things that I have around my kitchen that I use every day. And then of course, you know, there's, there's the meat, there, you know, that's 
a given um, because I've got a variety of steaks and roasts and that sort of thing in my freezer. But these are the things if all else fails uh, and, uh, and I don't have time to defrost a steak or take out a roast or whatever, I've got, I've got options and I can quickly make up something, get my protein in and uh, yeah, that, that was the, the point of this. So I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. One more thing. Oops, there's a hair there. Oh. Uh, uh -uh. oh. So the, the very first one, uh, the easiest one, are eggs. Uh, so you can always find in my fridge a bowl, bowl, <laughs> boil, boil, boil. Uh, they also, um, oh, I was going to say something and now it, it just left. What was it good for? Take a second. I was wondering why it was so beat up. I ate this really beaten up looking egg. Like I saw it and I and I was like, I better eat that egg because it's really taking a lot of abuse in there. You said action. Uh, and uh, also, uh, no, never mind. Just scratch that part. That's, that's it.